is happening here. That's right. I turn up the music loud. Dance like nobody's watching. We got a reason to cheer. Lab. This week, we're talking about joy. Well, we take a look at the story of some people who knew when to celebrate. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. We have a lot of different reasons to celebrate, from big to small. Like finishing a race or finishing a puzzle. I started a puzzle last night, but it's not done yet. Did you finish the outside edges? Yeah. Then let's celebrate that. Cute. Mmm. All right. Biggest bubble wins. Ready? Good job. <laughs> We're celebrating our celebrations. Every successful bubble deserves to be celebrated. And that's a lot of celebrations. Speaking of bubbles, I know how to create some epic ones. With gum? Not quite, but they're still awesome. Let's make it. For a giant bubble wand worthy of celebration, we will need two wood dowels, three yards of cotton cord, two eye hooks, and a couple of washers. Why do we need washers for bubbles? Let's make a bigger loop for bubble making. Hmm. Step one, take a dowel and screw one of these eye hooks in. It might help to have an adult drill a small hole for the hook. Do we cut the cord into separate pieces? Yep. Step two, cut one piece of cord five feet six inches long and one that is three feet six inches. 
Scissors? Oh. Where'd she go? There you go. Make sure you use an adult to help you with scissors. There we go. There we go. Step three. Place the washers onto the long cotton cord. Wait, both of them? Yep. They will help later when we try to make big bubbles. Perfect. Step four. Tie one end of each cord to each dowel to make a giant smile. There we go. That's it. All done. I feel like we're missing something. You mean the bubbles? <gasps> Hold this. Oh, okay. <sighs> Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> How do we do this? Hold the dowels together and dip the cords into the solution. Okay. Then, lift them gently, still holding the sticks together. When you are high enough, separate the sticks into a big happy smile again, then swing gently to make a bubble. Oh, that was awesome. That was a ginormous bubble. Every bubble is worth celebrating. Wait, let me try. Go for it. Awesome. Nothing says celebration like bubbles. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Ezra. Ezra tells the story of God's people after they returned from exile in Babylon. But long before, out of a deep, deep love, God created an amazing world and people, us. When people turned away from God, the world was broken. From the very beginning, God had a plan to bring us back into a relationship. God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the entire world through Abraham's family line. That family, the Israelites, grew in number and became a great nation. But over and over, they turned away from God. At last, they were captured and taken away to Babylon. Even then, God promised that after 70 years, they would come home again. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. For 70 years, the Israelites were exiles living in the foreign land of Babylon. That's pretty much a lifetime. In fact, Babylon itself had been conquered and was now part of Persia. Many of God's people had never even seen their homeland of Judah. But even before the exile, God had promised through the prophet Jeremiah that the Israelites would return home after 70 years. So as God's people neared the 70 year mark, they must have wondered. We're still exiles. We have no power. What's going to change, God? The situation seemed hopeless, but our God is so awesome and powerful, it doesn't matter that we are not. In fact, God moved the heart of the new Persian king, Cyrus, to favor the Jewish people. The Lord is the God of heaven. He has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people may go up to Jerusalem and build the Lord's temple. This was incredible. Not only did King Cyrus give permission for the Jewish people to return home, but he gave back thousands of gold and silver dishes that had been taken from God's temple 70 years before. More than 40,000 Jewish people traveled home to Jerusalem on an epic journey. It took them months. And when they got home, well, it wasn't exactly home sweet home. The walls of Jerusalem were broken down. God's temple had been completely destroyed. The people couldn't live in Jerusalem, so they settled in towns outside the city. But their leaders, including a man named Zerubbabel, knew the most important thing was to rebuild the temple, the place where God would dwell among them. We'll start with the altar of the temple. What about the city walls? 
Yeah, there are enemies who want to stop us. We will honor God by rebuilding the temple first. Even though they were afraid, the people trusted God and rebuilt the huge, beautiful altar. This was one of the most important parts of the temple, where they could make offerings to God. Once it was complete, they could begin celebrating the feasts and festivals that God had given to Moses hundreds of years before. Woo woo! Mm. Part one was done. But there was still a huge amount of work to be done. So next, they tackled the foundations of the temple. All together now. One, two, three. Massive cedar logs from faraway Lebanon were floated many miles and then carried overland to Jerusalem. Then the people dragged them into place to form a strong foundation for the temple. Now, a foundation is a great start, but it's just a start. There was so much more work to do to rebuild the temple and the city walls and all Jerusalem. It probably felt overwhelming. The Levites, who had been given the role of leading God's people in worship, took their places before the temple foundation. With trumpets and cymbals, they led the people in praising God. The Lord is good. His faithful love to Israel continues forever. Yeah. Woo yeah. Thank you, God. God is good. Most of the people had been born in exile and had never seen the temple before it was destroyed. But a few old timers remembered the first glorious temple. Do you remember the first temple? It was bigger. Grand. This one here is like a tiny ant compared to a giant grasshopper. It's true that the new temple wasn't as impressive as the first one. It was true. They still had a long way to go. But God's people were still filled with joy to know that they'd completed one big step along the way. They praised God so loudly that their shouts of joy could be heard from miles around. The end. Gotta be honest, this story makes me tired. Yeah, I mean, I'm tired when I have a little project to do for one week. And the Israelites had an entire temple and city to rebuild. It was a ginormous job, for sure. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, you're probably not going to be rebuilding a city anytime soon, but we all have epic work to complete. School projects, learning a new skill, healing from an injury, Truth is, we will never be completely finished in this lifetime with all the things we need and want to do. That's why it's so important to celebrate the baby steps along the way. Like finishing the school year. Or learning how to play one song on the guitar. Exactly. God is with you each step along the way. And it's so important to stop and remember that. When you give thanks for all God has done and ask God for help to keep going, that can bring you joy. Even when you're not done yet. Yup. God knows we need joy in order to keep going. So this week, look for baby steps to celebrate. Like getting a good grade on your math assignment. Or making it a whole day without arguing with your sister. Or running around your block, working up your way to a 5K. All great ideas, because when we follow Jesus, God gives us joy through the Holy Spirit so we can celebrate every moment along the way. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. Celebrate each step of the way. Every step and every bubble. Ready to celebrate some more? Definitely. Instead of one giant bubble, how about a gazillion tiny bubbles? How about both? Whoa. Whoa! Try it again, try it again! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time! There's so many of them! <laughs> Whoa, okay.